Alright guys, my name's Ragtag and I'm the greatest gutter to your gamer on the face of this earth and today I want to talk to you about why there is still hope for Apex Legends. Yes, I do believe there is, but before we can do that, we need to take an honest look at the problems and also an honest look at misplaced boycotting and senseless bashing of an otherwise awesome game. What I'm saying is, we need to get going a balanced analysis of the state of Apex Legends. Having said that, Take a look at this, which of course is for educational purposes only and will have a satisfying result for those of you who are thinking about calling me a lowlife scumbag in the comments. Just watch it before you pull the trigger and then you can continue to call me it because you'll be right, just for completely different reasons to the ones that you thought. So we're going to click solos at the same time. Three, two, one, go. How many players have you got in the queue? 42. 42. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's the champion? The dad legend TTV. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Where are we dropping, boys? Uh, um, well, like this, please. Oh yeah, you're gonna ping for me, arsehole. How am I supposed to oh. see? <laughs> <laughs> you're just going straight down there, yeah? Yeah, I'm just uh, headed right between Little Mountain Pass. Yeah, I think I see you. Is this you? Yeah, hi. This is Hello. absolute... Bullshit! Come <laughs> <laughs> here, boy. Alright then. You know what's coming now, don't you? Are you gonna punch me? Come on then, fight me! Alright, let's go. Like a man. Oh. I've got a box of graves next oh. to my mouse, bro. I don't want to hear excuses, I want to see results. <laughs> You're not gonna see any results. <laughs> if you lose this, dude. Oh, oh no. we're through you! Well... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so there you have it. Obviously, you can team up in this game with the solos. I've known about this for a little while and I've been seeing it as well. Very freaking annoying. Absolute bullshit. The reason I've decided to show it on video now is because, well, it's the 27th of August, so Iron Crown is coming to an end. It doesn't matter now, does it? So, the whole thing about being able to do that, is that acceptable? that something so easily circumventable circumventable is that a word i don't know but yeah the fact it is you just literally queue up with your friend and arrange it at the same time now when there were hot streaks going on in the elite queue the dev team were really quick to put an end to that by changing the ring so that it didn't you know have people screwing around in the circle but it doesn't feel like any steps were taken to avoid this. Is it because that it was such a short event? Or is it because they didn't believe enough people were doing it? Well, I can tell you in the last week, I have seen quite a few people teaming up. And they were getting smarter about it as well. So the people that were teaming up basically would cross paths. But they might not essentially attack the same target. And you might be thinking, am I just being salty and, you know, dying to two people separately? No, I, I scoped these guys and was watching them for a while. And I've been taking a look on Reddit and the EA forums. There are huge amounts of complaints of people teaming up in the Iron Crown event. Is this something that they could fix or have prevented or known about at the time? I don't know. Maybe it's too late to fix it now that it happened. But if the Iron Crown event or something similar was to come back with solos, surely this is something they can have some foresight with so that anyone that is on your friends list cannot essentially go into the same match as you in solos or if they're a new friend or they're a new unfriend, then you can't queue up with them either. I don't know if that's even possible to implement. It may well be that it's not because there's not enough people queuing, so it might make for much longer times. I've no idea, but surely there is a problem here and it can be solved. There, there has to be a way around it. However, having said that, whilst I have seen an increase in it, it's not happening every game. It's not even happening every third game. I would say it's probably happening every six or seven games to me and I do die a lot in the games so it's not as prevalent as you think it's just happening more because obviously the more time that passes people are aware of it but the other thing about it is it really stings every time it happens so you remember it so if it happens to you say twice in a day then all of a sudden your brain is going to protect you your ego's going to step up and say man this wasn't your fault all those games you played and you had all those friggin' teamers Every time you run into them, you're like, oh, damn it, these are just a couple of useless globules of sputum that decided to conjoin to make a more powerful version of their pointless sticky goo ball to land on the underside of your bare foot and annoy the shit out of you, you know? 
it sucks, it mars the rest of your games, it doesn't make you feel that good, but I think it's the same for hackers as well. Hackers is a problem in Apex Legends. Undeniably, there are more and more people learning to do it. There is the soft aim lock crap coming out now that's getting a lot better and harder to detect. But that then means that every time you have a verifiable hacker, every other time that you die, you look at that death with suspicion. So you're looking to prove that that impossible shot was in fact someone using some kind of cheat. But then it becomes to the point where many people just assume it's a cheater and don't even bother spectating. They don't have the time for that, they want to get into another game, but they just conclude that that was in fact a hacker. That is also a huge problem in the game, because that then creates a lot of false reports. And I don't mean false in-game reports, although that does apply, but a lot of false reports on the forums, on the Reddit, people shouting very loudly about all the problems with the game. I think that this is one of the issues that we're having, is that every time we lose, it's easier to pass the buck, pass the blame, pass it whatever to someone else, and say your game's broken, your game's full of hackers, your game's full of teamers, it's all a bag of shit. I think they do exist, and they are probably increasing, but they're not quite as bad as everyone is saying. And I might get some hate for pointing that out, but I do play this game a fair bit, and I am seeing what other people are seeing, just not as often. Not these bold claims where people come on the forums and say, oh, I played 10 ranked games today at Plat, and there was a hacker in every single one. Did you? Did you actually play 10 games, pal? Did you actually have a hacker in every single game? Did you verify this? Did you go through the spectator cam? Or did you just assume that those impossible shots that happened could never have been from a normal player? I pull off the occasional impossible shot. It's pure freaking dumb luck, but it does happen. If you don't verify every single hacker on it, then your reports about 10 in a row, whatever, they're not really justified. They're just you having a terrible day. And when you have, say, two or three hackers, it always feels like more. Why? Because it stings more. Because someone has basically taken your experience and flushed it down the toilet using external means, this extra software to get an edge over you. And yeah, it's bullshit. It definitely sucks. I just think one of the biggest things going on right now in terms of criticism from community to game devs is that it is not always accurate. And it's not always accurate because we're getting used to outrage culture. Someone does a little something wrong, everyone just gang piles on top of it. Having said all that, now we turn it back to things that just don't ever get fixed, such as the bugs in this game. Because the amount of time it takes to fix mistakes and errors and bugs and all the rest of it, too long. Far too freaking long. You can complain about lack of content, sure, that's not a problem, but do you want the basic game to work? Yes. Do you want their monetizable free-to-play model to have better skins on offer and at more affordable prices that don't screw you over into having to buy double the amount of packs of coins even if they knock 33% off the price? Yes, these are good complaints. I like them. And I like them because they're verifiable. But if we start to then turn our thoughts towards, is there still hope for this game? Yes, there is. I am 100% positive that there is, and let me just explain to you why. The reason there is hope for this game is because it was given a bad start. It had a bad start because everyone loved it straight away in its unfinished state. Yes, I'm going to say unfinished because it was buggy as hell. There wasn't a great deal of content ready, and they hadn't probably even had it in the back burner long enough. I think that the skins were horrible as well when it first came out. There was just too much wrong with the game, but the initial core gameplay grabbed us. Grabbed all of us. Like, what, 50 million players within the first couple of weeks or whatever? That's insane. Are they capable of keeping a, a stable core player base after fucking it up? I think they actually can. And let me explain one reason why. The one reason is simple. It's Titanfall 2. You only have to go and have a look at that game to see how magnificent it is. And guys, I have been playing that game a lot this last week, mainly because I was thinking of making some content, doing some gun comparisons, you know, talking about the recoil between the flatline on Titanfall and the flatline on Apex Legends. Yeah, all the weapons from Titanfall 2 are in Apex Legends as well, pretty much. And you would really enjoy the, the gunplay in Titanfall because the, there is pretty much no recoil in it. The L-Star shoots straight for hell's sake. It is a devil of a good time. So yeah, that game, is basically the benchmark, if you like, to what I hope Apex Legends will become. No, I'm not saying I want Titans for every, you know, legend, although that would be funny. I think that would be quite amusing. What I am saying is everything is so tightly tuned. The gunplay is great. The balance is great. I honestly have never had so much fun in an FPS game for years. I'm, I'm absolutely hooked on it. But how does that help Apex Legends and its lack of what is available to the player right now? I have always said that Apex Legends is a casual game, even though there is a ranked mode and there are people that basically log on and play nothing but that all day long. I don't think it is in a state where it can appeal to everyone like that. 
and that's because there just isn't enough coming out in terms of updates. It cannot compete with what Fortnite can do. The dev team is much smaller and they have their own way of doing things. And that's fine, but I'm just treating it in that exact way, that it is going to be something I just pop on for an hour or two a day. Now, that's something that I think many are disappointed with because it's addictive and battle royales like this, you know, don't come along very often. So when it does, the pain of letting it go is actually a lot more than people let on. And I'm not trying to say everyone's grieving over a fucking video game. I'm not saying that. What I'm trying to say is that people want it to have the same effect as when they first sat down and played it for the, you know, for the very first time. They, they were just so blown away by it, but now they're looking for something else to renew that, to keep it going. And the rate of the content being rolled out, it's just not going to happen. I'm not saying also that this is going to be like No Man's Sky, that it's going to suddenly turn it around uh, and then be, you know, the revival of the century, whatever, because many games have turned themselves around. No Man's Sky just came from a very, very bad place to a very, very good place. With Apex Legends, there should have been content ready to roll out with bigger plans on the horizons and already in the works, maybe close to ready by the time the game even launched. But the bugs were too many and numerous, they still exist even now for fuck's sake. The team at Respawn was probably too small to handle the game grabbing such a huge part of the market so early. It overwhelmed us and them, but their content offering response underwhelmed. But I think if you treat the game like I do, just a little extra to your day, it might in time build up to something where you've got so much to do in there that you won't need much else to occupy your time. However, you might be the all or nothing type who will only return when there's so much to do, it's worth the time investment. And if so, I respect that. However, I'm going to keep on at this until the devs screw it all up or they actually do bring it to fruition like they did with Titanfall. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to play some World of Warcraft later.